Hello everyone, this is Francisco here, and I just wanted to record this video to share a little bit about my past with everyone, and I shared my testimony a few times, like my story, um, growing up, I never did anything bad, I never like, shot anyone, I never shot a real gun before, I never stabbed anyone, and honestly, I would never hurt anyone, um, but growing up, I did get in a few fights, mainly because I was obligated to, I think, my belief, um, there is a few where they told me to fight, so I fought. Um, I remember one day, my cousin told me to go beat someone up, so he took me. I went with him well, to fight, you know? Not really to beat him up. Because I was thinking maybe he was trying to get me beat up, but I didn't get beat up. So we were fighting, and then we stopped fighting. And then he was like, why did you guys stop fighting? Continue fighting. So we continued fighting. And then the cops arrived. And I think I left. And he was trying to, like, hide a gun or something. I don't know if he was trying to set me up. Um, I don't really know. But I took off. Nothing happened. But I remember my cousin... But well, that was my cousin Julio that took me. And then my cousin Mario got there somehow with all of the, my, the rest of my family. My mom and them. They just arrived out of nowhere. So it was probably a setup. And instead of me getting locked up, Julio got locked up, my cousin, for the gun. He had a gun. A little twenty two, But still, it was a weapon. It was a gun. I don't even know what the hell he was doing with that. I don't even know why he was carrying that gun. And then my cousin Mario arrived to the scene. The cops slammed him to the fucking, to the, you know, on the front of the hood. And he later told me about that. I ran. My mom somehow was there. She picked me up. And they took me home, right? So that was like one, one like, um, story. Then, um, like, I started going to school. I went through elementary. I went to middle school. And I think, like, around, I think it was, like, seventh grade, the guys there were talking about gangs. They were talking about, you know, gangs. I'm not. I'm not even going to say which gang. I don't think. Um, I don't think it's worth my my, you know, worth condoning to that or to glorify that in any way. You know, I think it's. I I'm against gangs. I'm against all of that, and I don't give a fuck. I would die. I would die, letting everyone in the world know that. Okay. So, like right now, some girl texts me. Her name is Elizabeth Mayfield on Facebook. She just followed me, and she's a mutual friend of Billy Enriquez. Which was like the main leader of the gang. You know that I later became a part of. Because they convinced me to. And they threatened us. They were like. Because we started our own little thing you know. We were like a little tagging crew. And we were just doing our own thing. We, we would just get high. Smoke weed. Really smoke weed and alcohol. We would do beer runs. And it was just like. My 
brother, my cousins, just family, you know. But then these other guys got involved and they threatened us saying if we didn't stop tagging that they were going to beat us up. And they convinced us to join their gang. But we weren't even a part of a gang. We were just like a tagging crew. We were just like actors, you know, pretending to be something that we weren't. And really, we were just trying to have fun. Um, so this guy, you know, I later, I got out of juvenile hall. They, no, I, I, my cousin Mario, um, got in an argument with, with my, one of my best friends. And he never told me anything about it. And I think maybe they were jealous of my friendship with my friend. So, like, my cousin had a fight with him and he told me that it was over a BB gun later on. Which I was, like, highly disappointed. Like, what the hell? But I regret not going up to my friend and talking to him. Because I remember I, I seeing him sitting down all alone. And I asked my, my cousin Mario, which I had no idea he had beef with. And I told him, what's wrong with Danny? And he said, I don't know. So I was like, okay, whatever. Like, you know, he will come around soon, you know? Maybe he was just on the phone or talking or something. I didn't even think about it, honestly. And I never really talked to, to anyone about all this, you know? So, um, my cousin, you know, hit him, and I got involved. I hit him a few times, and then his brother came and choked me out. And basically, he got me off his brother, you know. He didn't want me to be a part of it. So, I got away. Well, he got me away. Which got me away from the fight, which was good. And uh, my cousin Julio shot someone on a in a drive by shooting. Later, we found out that he had killed a girl named Crystal Theobald. He murdered her. And we all went down for that. And they told us not to say anything. So we didn't say anything. We didn't even know what the fuck was going on anyway. For all I know, he never killed anyone. They just said that. To teach him a lesson. Not to be getting out of a vehicle and shooting at random cars. And so I got locked up at the age of 17. I went to my cousin Yesenia's house, which happened to be with like the gang leader. And he took my dog because I had a pit bull and she was pregnant. So I went over there to retrieve my dog back, to take my dog back. And I, had, and I happened to stay there for like a month or two or longer. Then the cops raided the house. <clears throat> oh, no. No, that was... Well, before they raided the house, I was living with him. I was hanging out with um, a neighbor across the street. His name was Eric Baragon. Eric Soldier. And I was hanging out with him. We would smoke weed. Um, one day, he bullied some kids. And I was with him. And I think we left it at that, right? But later that night, they came back in the car. And they they were trying to beat us up. And I got scared. I had some dumbbells or the workout, like the 10s for the, for the compressing bar for the bench. I got so scared, I threw it at the car. And 
some guy was running towards me, so I ran inside of the house and I locked the fucking door. Like, oh shit. And Billy ran to the house and grabbed a gun. And I guess they were fighting out there and they had a knife. They almost killed, they almost stabbed um, Eric. And then, I don't, I don't know, I, pe- I peeked out the door, no one was there. So I went out and by that time they were gone and Billy came out from the house. But they were, they took off and then... Um, he handed me the gun and told me to go put it inside of the house. So I was like, okay. So I took it, put it under the mattress where I was sleeping, not even thinking about the kids because he had children and he didn't even ask me later on about the weapons either because it was that one and then he bought another one. Then he had it like a shotgun and an SKS. But those two handguns that were under the mattress. And. And then we went to a party. That was, He was staying in Marina Valley. Then we went to Riverside where I was living with my mom. And we went out there, you know, to visit my cousin Mario, and we went to a party, and I just went for, just to hang out with a friend that I had met right there at my cousin's house, and uh, Eric had... um, Stabbed someone, started a fight. Well, he didn't start it, though. But the other guy started it because my cousin Mario's girlfriend had beat some other girl up right there down the street, claiming that she was getting with her man. So this guy was getting crazy with us. So, you know, Eric just stabbed him. And we took off. So that resulted in the raids in Riverside back in, I think, 2007 and in Riverside County. And then um, so, yeah, I went to Juvenile Hall and they told me, or before I went there, though, I went to the police station and they were like, hey, don't say anything. Don't say anything. But I feel now like People are using that against me, you know? I really do feel like that. I feel like they did it all on purpose to to fuck with me. To fuck with my mind and to fuck with me in my life. That's how I feel. So, I went to juvenile hall. And then they charged me as an adult. I went to the county jail. I fought my case there for two years. I went PC, protective custody, because I didn't want to be a part of the gang. And someone in juvenile hall had told me about the PC side, and he said, you don't even have to deal with the gangs or anything like that. So I took his advice, and I prayed about it, and I felt like God wanted me to do that. You know, so I did it. And everyone was like looking down on me because I did that. But I didn't care. Because at this time my mom had been incarcerated as well. So I didn't want to put any more stress on anyone. But I feel like they were just acting too. Like something didn't feel right. And so I later got released when I was 20 two years old, five years and four months later. This stressed me the fuck out. I mean, look at my eyes. I'm still stressed the fuck out. And so I got out and I I was on parole with an ankle monitor for gang enhancement for three years. 
They had me on that shit for three fucking years. I had to charge it. I had to go to the parole office. And I had to run my own window cleaning company. I should have just gone in the union then, and I didn't. Um, and in the process, as I was in jail, I ran into, you know, Billy, who I was staying at my cousin's house in Marino Valley. And he eventually became my celly. And I was like, whatever about it, nothing against him or anything, you know? I just really wanted to be alone and forget all about all this drama stuff and, you know, continue with my life. But now, oh yeah, and when I got released, um, Spider, some guy named Spider came up to me at Ken's house in Gwinnett and told got off the car and I was like, what the fuck? And he was like, hey, thank you. And I was like, oh, okay, no problem, whatever, you know? He left. Now, Billy is hitting me up through Facebook. And I don't even want any, any, you know, I don't want no part in any of these guys' lives. You know, what happened, happened. People got hurt. I don't know what the fuck is really going on. Because they told me not to say anything, but... They told me not to say anything because they had their own schemes, their own their own ideas or whatever. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking, you know? I don't know what they were doing or were up to. And I still don't know what the fuck they're up to. So maybe they they did something where they made money or something fishy. Because my mom got locked up, my cousin Mario got locked up, my brother Sammy got locked up. My cousin Louis got locked up. Um, my cousin Julio got locked up, and I think, and my mo- even my mom. And I think that what they did is they probably locked us up on purpose so they could get at my cousins because they were, you know, girls. So they were they probably locked us up on purpose so they could get at them and have sex with them. But I don't know. I mean that even that thought crosses my mind. Um But yeah, like it's it's a bunch of weird stuff, you know? And that's why I think the way I, that I think and I thank God for the World Wide Web. I thank God that if anyone does anything to anyone now, we will all know the truth. About what happens to someone. And that's the way it should be. You know like. If someone is really deserving of death. Then. You know whoever did it is like okay man up. And you know do your time. Whatever. You know like you have to do what you have to do sometimes. Like whatever. But. Not to be a little bitch about it. And hide it. And. Allow other people to go down for your bullshit. Like that's fucked up. You know? So, you know, I'm like, fuck all this. Like, this is a bunch of bullshit. But, and, like, I'm fine now. I'm, like, over here in Redding, California. After, like, um, I was out for three years. I got out in 2012. I didn't come out here until 2019. So, that was seven years later. And I've been out here for two years, going on two years, I think. Yeah, going on two years. So I don't give a fuck, honestly and respectfully, about any of these gang people. I don't care if they hear this. I don't care. You know, some of them might be my Facebook friends. Like, I don't know. And this mysterious person... Is following me. I don't know who she is. But she's a mutual friend with. Billy. Which. Makes me suspicious. Like they're probably working together. Again to conspire against me. 
And, you know, like my brother was telling me stories like people were messing with him over there, stealing his car. Like, who the fuck steals a car these days? No one steals any cars. Like, that was back in the day type of shit. Like, people like that should be in prison. They should be locked up. Now go get a fucking job. Ask for a ride. What the fuck are you still in a car and, like, and hoping to drive around town? Like, what the fuck are you thinking? Some people are fucking retarded. But, <clears throat> I don't know, like, I mean, I didn't have a good childhood. I mean, my mom and my dad raised me well. I stayed out of trouble for the most part, but I grew up like everyone else with shit. So, I mean, I got bored and did stupid shit as well, you know? And shit that I regret. But, I mean, who hasn't? We're all fucking human. And I feel like these motherfuckers are just like, like vultures watching me. And for some reason, I get like this thought that they're over there, like out there watching me. They're They're hacking me. And they have a, like, what's that word? A reasonable cause to, based on me not, like, testifying or sharing the truth. Or maybe they classified me as a violent person. So, therefore, they have the right to, like, hack me or whatever. Since they did... Made me go to the police station. My parole officer made me go to the police station and, and file for gang enhancement. And he said, you have to do that all the time now. But it's like, whatever. I just did it when I was on parole. Because I'm not a part of no fucking gang. You know, I went PC. And I don't give a fuck who knows about it. I'm not violent. I'm not trying to hurt anyone. You know, so... I feel like there's people out there who, like my family members, they probably lied about me. And they're probably like manipulating me. So I could be in that, on, in that stage, fight or flee, fight or flee, fight or flee. And that's where they want to keep me at. I, I could never have any peace. It's like, if I go out, they want me to feel like, like that. They want me to have that type of mentality. And I'm sick of it. Like, I cast all my worries and anxieties over on God. Like, motherfuckers can hack me and, you know, do whatever. Like, I don't care. Because I know God is watching everyone. And if anyone does anything to me, then God will handle it. God will take care of it. So I'm not worried. And I just hope and pray if someone does kill me that... The right people get taken down and go to prison or whatever. Like, I don't care. Like, I I would wish for all this gang stuff to, to end, to seize forever. And that's exactly why I share everything that I share. That's exactly why I speak about everything I speak about. Because I'm sick and tired of all that. I don't want to be a part of all that. And it stressed me out for a very long time. And when I got out, I was scared because I had PC'd up. But I was only in the game for like three years or less than that. And I was only like 15 years old, 15 or 14 years old. And and then I got locked up. So, I don't know what these people are thinking about me or, you know, all that stuff. And my cousin Mario testified to me that he had stabbed someone in jail. So, I don't give a fuck anymore. You know, like, 
I just want, you know, people to, to know the truth, you know, and because I'm hearing voices and it's like, I've been hearing these voices for like two or three, four years, four years or something. And it's like, it's like a curse or something that's following me, you know, and I don't want that shit on me. I don't want all that negativity anymore. You know, like, I pledge my allegiance to the United States of America, you know, big bad, all day long. I'm not giving a fuck about my own life, my my own safety. Like, I just want to do what is right. So I'm out here working with the local 185, you know, trying to do good. And I am. I'm pissed off because I don't have a lot of money. Yes, who the fuck wouldn't be? You know, but I'm I'm sick and tired of all this. And I and I feel like I really am getting hacked and because someone's been stealing my money. I had the, with the EDD, I filed for unemployment because when you're not working, you know, traffic control flagging, that's what you have to do. You have to go on under under unemployment because you're on call, you're on standby. So I filed for EDD and someone was um, stealing like every week, $300, $300, $300. Now, you know, they're like giving me the big runaround with the EDD. Um, I try to re-sign up. I try, I, I tried to file for a new claim and I, and I am in the process of doing it, but they wanted two forms of, um, identification. So I had to go to the U S post office and obtain a U.S. passport, which I did, and I had to pay like two hundred dollars for that because I got, you know, that and another document, and so I'm waiting for that. But once I get it, then I'll be able to, you know, file for that new file for file for that new claim again, you know, and and um. I'll be able to get my money back. Not my money back, but I'll be able to get my money again. And I just hope that, you know, with through all this stuff that's going on in the world, that, you know, we get to fix it through the internet. Because a lot of people are getting scammed out there. A lot of people are doing scandalous shit to other people. And we we really need to, you know, work on the digital ID. We really need to look at, look out for one another, for each other in this world. Um, and it is only then that we're able, we're going to be able to figure out who's, who's doing what and why people are doing certain things and who's hurting who, who's being violent, who's not being violent. Because my friend, uh, Billy, he shared his testimony a lot of times in jail. We had a lot of Bible studies together. He shared his testimony and he was the foreman of a construction company. And so he was doing that, acting all professional at work. But then when he would go to Riverside from Moreno Valley, he would act all gang banging. He would fucking, you know, w- you know, while up. You know, the whole crowd, he, he was the one that fucking got everyone on that level, you know? So, you know, stuff like that as well with the digital ID, monitoring and recording everything, all activity, all activity levels. Like, why are you acting this way over here and this other way over here? And why are you influencing people to be you know, living negatively and stuff like that. This is all legal shit. You know, and we have the World Wide Web. And, you know, maybe God forget, forgives and forgets about what happened in the past. Well, but some don't, some people don't. But God does. So, from now on out, we have like a new beginning. We have a clear fucking slate, a clean slate. We have forgiveness, but 
you know, of course, if we, you know, do evil or bad, you know, from this moment on or whatever, especially now with the World Wide Web and everything, the worldwide exposure, facial recognition, voice detection, all the the whole nine yards, like, like, we really have to repent, people. If you guys are in gangs and stuff, we need to repent and turn to God and just do our own fucking thing. You know, if someone fucks with you and your family, then you deal with it. If they don't, then don't. If you really feel like you really need to take someone out, then fucking take that person out. If only if you're able to, if you want to do the time, if you want to really shoot someone and go to prison for the rest of your life and have that lingering over your head, I mean, is it even worth it? You have to ask yourself that. So you have to make sure that it's worth it. And obviously, I've been to prison. I've been to juvenile hall. I've been to the county jail. So I had a lot of time to think. So, I mean, I'm not violent though. I'm just right here doing my own thing. And I love people. Like, once once all this sickness stuff goes away, I'm going to fucking Bethel Church and I'm going to serve, you know, in the children's ministry. And I'm going to love on people. You know, and I'm going to continue doing God's work because God allowed me to go through the shit that I went through for a fucking reason. And with Facebook and all this shit, like we all have the digital ID attached to our lives, our our each individual lives. <sighs> attached to our social security number and all that. So... So yeah, like, I tried, I even tried like telling my brother to stay away from these guys. Like, stay away from all these guys. Like, they're only negative. Like, they're, they're nothing but negative. Negative. Negativity. They're downers. All they want to do is bring other people down while they lift themselves up. That's why we really need the World Wide Web to police all of us. We really fucking do. We re- we really need the World Wide Web to police all of us and to monitor our activities, everything, like good and bad behavior. Like Facebook, they have flagged me so many times for like posting inappropriate stuff on Facebook, and I I love it. I love the fact that they do that because. It, it it just share it just shows that they care they care about the community they care about people they care about me you know they care about people they care about everyone and that's exactly what 